welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to be checking out the Rapid Raft from a chartered supply company. So don't touch that dial. So as a bit of a background, I've only just recently discovered the world of pack rafting. So while this is a review on the rapid raft, I'm also going to provide some insights. Hopefully will help some of the uh, newcomers onto the sport. So from the information I was able to gather, the rapid raft was designed initially for the military who had been looking for an expedient way to do water crossings with some heavy gear. There are a lot of different types of pack rafts. Uh, pack rafting, from what I what I understand, originated in Alaska uh, for the guides there and uh, people who are, who are doing hunting trips. And it only in the several years has transitioned to more mainstream for uh, a lot of outdoors people. Pack rafting has really opened up a lot of exploration of waterways, rivers, glacier fed lakes for a lot of people and really just adds another dimension of adventures. The first pack raft that I actually tried was the Osprey which is from Stikine pack rafts. It gave me kind of a, a reference point to compare the rapid raft to. Whenever you're looking at the rapid raft what you need to keep in mind is one of the core features that it was designed around which is minimalism. So it's meant to be a minimalist design and it's meant to be super durable and able to carry a lot of weight. So you may have seen the different kinds of boats out there. Some of them have the pointed bow and some of them have more of a square front bow. The Rapid Raft has that square front bow designed to be able to carry heavier loads up front, such as a, a pack or a bike or maybe some game meat. This design allows your boat to be able to get over the any kind of waves that it encounters with a lot more stability compared to the sharper uh, bowed boats. The benefits of those is that because it uses less material, they do tend to be lighter overall and also will uh, tend to be a little bit speedier through the water. So let's go over the Rapid Rafts Dragonite. The other benefit of the Rapid Raft is that you can inflate it in as little as 23 seconds with no tools. Whereas some of the more traditional boats, uh, you would have that um, inflator bag usually at the very least, or a pump. While the Rapid Raft is designed to be inflated without any tools, I typically use a small electric pump that I also use to inflate my air mattress to inflate the Rapid Raft. This allows me to do other camp chores or pack my bag and get, get things ready to load onto the raft while the raft is inflating. Also because I'm not in a hurry, it's just more convenient for me to just plug it into the electric pump and not have to worry about it. Also, if you are planning on putting your gear in the tubes, then you would also not be able to use it in the way that it was intended to be inflated as you would have to put your gear into the tubes prior to inflation. of its design, you are able to put some dry bags in the side tubes and carry your gear that way. One of the downsides of the roll top design is that it will leak air over time. 
the ability to be able to inflate the boat at any time with your mouth is extremely valuable. Uh, when you're rolling it up, I would make sure that to minimize any kind of wrinkles as you roll it, kind of push the uh, wrinkles out to the side and get it as flat as possible so you get good contact between the two, two sides and then roll it down and then securely uh, buckle the uh, the buckles together and that should be all that you need to maintain air in there. Uh, I've heard some people put zip ties on the ends or a, a bit of uh, rubber sealant on the front but I find that it's not really necessary. Keep in mind that when you first get out on the water you'll need to give it a bit of time to for the air inside the raft to equalize to the temperature of the water versus the outside temperature. And this is across any kind of pack raft. When you get out on the water, especially on a hot day, you inflate that raft. That cold water, it's gonna be colder than the outside temperature, is going to compress the air inside, which will make it feel like your boat is leaking. So on, say, the, the Osprey, once I got out there, after about 20 minutes on the water, I noticed that the boat itself seemed quite a bit softer. And then I would need to then take it out onto to the shore again and then pump it up. Whereas with the rapid raft, because of the mouthpiece, I can simply blow on it anytime that I need some more air. One thing I will mention about the design of the uh, inflator valve, uh, the mouthpiece, is that I don't know how flexible you have to be, but I certainly cannot be sitting on this, this raft and be able to reach back and get my mouth on this thing. So what I've done is I've gotten this uh, PVC or silicone hose and I've attached it to the valve. So now I can just keep it in my raft and I can inflate it by mouth whenever I need to. The seat that I use is the Snug Pack Pillow. As you can see, it packs down to quite a compact size. It serves a double purpose because I also use it as a pillow. So I'm already carrying it with me anyway. The benefit of having the seat, of course, is that whenever you get into your boat, you're bound to get some water in the boat itself. And the seat allows you to be raised up so you don't get a wet butt. Uh, the other benefit of it is because you're a little bit higher up on the boat, you're able to get a little bit more leverage when you're paddling. When you're paddling during the colder uh, temperatures, it'll help insulate you from the cold. I'm five foot seven, and when I sit into, in the boat, I find it actually quite comfortable, even without um, an additional lumbar support. Just the way that the shape of the back portion is, I find it to be very, very comfortable, especially with that seat in there. Um, and it. The floor length is perfect for me in a way that I can fully stretch my legs out and still have just a little bit of room to um, wiggle my feet around so that my legs don't fall asleep. It's not quite big enough to be able to get my dog in there, which um, that's kind of a bit of a bummer. I could do it if I say hung my legs off to the side but I don't know if I'd want to do that over a long period. If it was a rapid river crossing, I could certainly do that. Uh, I, it would be a bit tight, but it could be done. But you'll notice that uh, it doesn't have traditional D-rings. Rather, it's got fabric loops, which I've gone ahead and added this bungee um, shock cord to allow me to be able to store a pack or just some smaller items up front and be able to secure it that way. So one of the first things I noticed when I took the rapid raft out onto the water was how much it had a tendency to sway back and forth as I paddled. And you can minimize this by you don't put the paddle as deeply in the water and you don't go past your shoulder as much. So there are ways to mitigate that back and forth sway. But as soon as I stopped paddling, I did notice that it would start to kind of spin me around. So it wasn't long after I decided to pick up a skeg kit and install it on to the rapid raft.
that was the test with the skeg on. We'll do it without the fin. Okay. Pulling this thing out. Okay. With the skeg installed, it allows me to track straighter. And then when I'm paddling, obviously I'll get more uh, distance forward because the energy is not being expended going left to right. Where the skeg is useful is on flat water, lakes, and any kind of uh, water that doesn't have much of a current. Uh, where you wouldn't want the skeg is something like a, a river or a white water situation where that skeg will run the risk of hitting uh, rocks and bottoming out. So I really like the fact that the skeg is a removable option. I can put it in when I need to, but it still doesn't impact me from uh, being able to compress the rapid raft as it was designed. The other thing I noticed was as I would bring up the paddle, a lot of that water would drip down, uh, down the paddle and end up in my boat. And because the rapid raft is not a self bailing boat and it has a bathtub floor, all that water just sits there. So what I decided to do, which seems to work pretty well, is I picked up some wax and waxed the paddles on both sides. And so now when I put it in the water, the majority of the water will just bead right off. And it works quite well to minimize the amount of water that flows down your paddle. This is the rapid raft compressed down into its packed size and is easily stuffable in a 25 liter pack with lots of room to spare. The rapid raft is offered in two colors, the green and the orange color. If you're like me and prefer some of the earthier tones in your gear, the green rapid raft is awesome. However, if you do end up running into a, an emergency scenario where perhaps you need to be seen from a distance, um, maybe you've called search and rescue, you want to be a little bit more visible. And that's the beauty of the design where the floor of your boat is a bright orange. So you can easily lay this out and be spotted by search and rescue from above or from a distance. Some of the tips that I have for maintaining your pack raft over time would be that if you ever take your raft out onto, you, onto any kind of salt water, uh, I would get home and rinse that raft off as quickly as possible, get that salt water off. Uh, there's a solution that you can spray onto the, the raft that will protect it from the UV rays and that will uh, ensure the longevity of the material of your pack raft prevent it from uh, discoloration and sun fade. Uh, another thing would be to, when you are storing your pack raft, always make sure that the raft is dry, clean, and when you roll it up, don't roll it up super tight, don't have it uh, buckled up and compressed. Just have it rolled up loosely and store it in a cool, dry place away from the sun. When you are done your paddle for the day or if you're taking a break, try to avoid having your raft out on exposed I've been using to the, the sun. raft for about six weeks now and I'm absolutely loving it. The, it's given me the ability to explore all the lakes and rivers and the little islands around my area. And because of its compact size, I'm able to pack it into my pack and take it out on the various expeditions that we go out on. And I'm really looking forward to exploring all the glacier fed lakes and uh, checking out all the mountain lakes that has previously been outside of our reach. The only sort of negative things that I would maybe say about the rapid raft is that if you're taller than five foot seven, you may have to contend with having your legs hang out of the boat. And if you plan on carrying a lot of gear, a backpack and larger items in your boat, it may be a bit cramped. In my personal opinion, if you do end up getting a rapid raft, I highly recommend you pick up the three items, which is a retrofit skeg kit, a seat, and a hose for the inflator valve. There's not really a do-it-all kind of boat, and 
because there are so many different types of rafts out there, it's really up to you to be able to decide what kind of raft is best suited to your needs. Some of the things that I would consider when deciding whether or not the rapid raft is the right product for you will be things like how much gear will you need to carry? How much of the trip will be spent on the water? Is it primarily going to be a land-based trip with some water travel? Or will it be primarily a water-based trip only stopping on land occasionally or for camping? The Rapid Raft is suited to a large variety of different activities and lifestyles and uses. You want to just get your feet wet and you're not exactly sure what kind of boat you'll need, what kind of activities you'll be wanting to do with this boat, the Rapid Raft is a good way to break into that kind of world without dropping a huge amount of money right away. If you're a hunter that carries their gear on their back, I'm sure there have been a, at least one or two instances where you would have wished that you had something like the Rapid Raft to get you and your game and your gear across um, a water crossing. Maybe you're an overlander that likes to have his rooftop tent and just go out on the weekend at the spur of the moment and go out on adventures. Having a rapid raft in your truck wouldn't take up a lot of room and again allows you to get out there and, and explore the waterways, do some fishing. On the other end of the spectrum, maybe you're a, a survivalist or a prepper. I would say it's almost an essential piece of kit to have something like the rapid raft in your bug out bag. If you're in a disaster zone where you are at a greater risk of floods, hurricanes and these kind of things, having something like the rapid raft for each member of your family could save a life. The rapid raft could also be a great way to bring a boat along with you on vacation. It just gives you a lot more freedom to be able to explore. Those of you in the ultralight space will really appreciate this boat. No pumps and the fact that you can use the pillow that you're probably not bringing, but if you were bringing one, you could use that as a seat. In conclusion, the Rapid Raft is an awesome product. And if it checked off any of those boxes for you, I would highly suggest you checking out the company's website, check out and read more about the Rapid Raft. I'll put the link in the description of this video below. Well, that's about it guys. I hope you found this video somewhat useful and informative. If you have any other questions about the Rapid Raft itself, go ahead and put it in the comment section below. I'll do my best to get you some answers. If you enjoyed the video and would like to see more, uh, do consider hitting that like and subscribe because it would really help our channel out. Until next time, see you guys outside.